Hey watch friends, today we're going to check out the long awaited return of my personal favorite Zelos. This is the Nova, now in its Nova 2 form. This is just going to be a quick candid unboxing. I actually haven't looked inside of here. I took out the outer packaging. Um, however, I haven't checked this out myself yet either, uh, but I will have the full review coming in exhaustive detail. And of course, we'll check it out next to the original version as well. So first on the outside, as you can see here, the typical now uh, Zelos cardboard box. Let's flap that open. And then inside, you can see we have the watch roll. Here we've got the warranty card. So always still the same metal construction that stayed true for quite some time there. And then sliding this over. We've seen this on uh, past versions now. Uh, this is very nice travel roll. It is a harder style pouch. It is cushioned there and it's going to have three watch slots inside. But let's check out what we're really here to see. Okay, so there we go. We've got the salmon version here. So let's go ahead and slide that out. This, as you can see, just has legs on that. And then that slides out there. It looks like it's loose. All right, so then inside, this one, I do note this is, I believe, a pre-production version. I believe they include like a wrapping and stuff uh, over here. However, this one, yeah, it doesn't look like it has uh, the wrapping on it. So just something to be aware of in note there as far as this particular variant. So with the Nova 2, we're going to see, and we'll of course unpack this in much more detail on the full, or in the full review rather. But this one, you're going to see there's a lot of updates from the original Nova. So we'll just quickly go through what their stated specs are. And then of course, I'll throw this on calipers. We'll get comparisons, all that kind of stuff coming up. But as far as case size, they state this as coming in at 37 millimeters for the case. So for being the dressier style, it's definitely on the smaller side for Zelos, and certainly it's not what people typically think of when they think of Zelos. Most people think of dive watches and those kind of things, but as I mentioned at the outset, this is a personal favorite for me. I love the execution on the original version, and we'll see how this one holds up. As far as the lug to lug, because of the short case size, you also get a very, uh, or small case size rather, you get a very short lug to lug. So here you're only looking at 43.5 millimeters. One of the claims to fame though with this is the case thickness. As you can I'm sure see here and we'll appreciate more when we look at varied footage, this case is impossibly thin. It's only coming in without the crystal at 7.2 millimeters. And then with this pretty highly uh, box edge crystal there, you can see that this is only coming in at 9.2 millimeters. So still well under 10 millimeters inclusive of the crystal. Part of that is lending to or owing to the movement. So this again carries through. It is the ETA 7001. So th that ETA 7001 is a very well um, storied movement, has a lot of history, great reliability for it. What you're not going to have, unfortunately, is you will not have um, hacking uh, for that. So do be aware of it. However, with a sub dial second in the dressier style, I've never found that to be a barrier but what you do have is a very thin very reliable nicely decorated movement as you can see here and as a whole, I just think it is a great choice. They were actually originally planning, I believe, on switching this over for the Nova 2 to the LJP D100, which is going to be very similar, or is very similar to the 7001. It's kind of an updated version of that from LJP. Uh, however, that uh, that being said, I believe there were some issues with movement availability, so they stuck with the 7001, and I think many of you will agree with me. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I really have no complaints with uh, that movement carrying over. But some of the things that we're going to note here as far as the up Updates. As you can probably already ready, readily see, if you're familiar with the original one, that one was principally going to be a brushed finish. This one, as you can see, is a full polish. So that's going to be, I expect, polarizing. I personally, I'm going to have to spend some time with it to see how I feel because I really did like the somewhat sporty dress look of the original and I'm not usually a huge fan of full polish, but look at some of these cut lines. You've still got those sh sharp lugs. Obviously, it's going to be a fingerprint magnet, so you're going to see me wiping this down a lot here as I touch it. But you can see those sharp lug cut lines, just that nice slim case. Just as a whole, you know, I'm really going to be curious to see how I feel about this, if I do warm up to the polish or not. But regardless of where I land, there's no denying this is a good looking watch overall. One of the other things that you're going to see is the original version, while it did come with a very similar black slab leather strap for it, it did also include a brace and I know they weren't thrilled with the original bracelet, but it was superbly comfortable. And many people did still like the bracelet largely because of the comfort. Even if the aesthetic wasn't exactly what they were going for, they did drop the 
bracelet though on the version 2, so you will not have that any longer. But some of the big updates that they have, one of the main things you're going to notice is the dial layout is completely different. So the polish might be uh, quick to catch your eye, but that dial layout is really where you're going to see it. So it still is, of course, going to be with a 6 o'clock sub-dial configuration uh, for this. And that, of course, naturally, because of the 7001 movement, is just kind of by design there. But what you can see, though, is it does now have these polished kind of perimeters and borders. Really changes the aesthetic. Additionally, you're now having numerals uh, instead of uh, having batons there. And then one of the things you might have already picked up on is you actually lost loom. So in the past, this had, I believe, BGW9 applied, and that was to the hands as well as to the markers. Now you can see that this is actually going to be more in traditional dress styling, and it's just going to be a full polished handset. And as far as lighting, in the full review, we're going to check it out, indoor, outdoor footage, all that kind of stuff. So we'll get much better feel for this. But one of the other really big things that you're going to notice is these dials. So one of the things that the original was known for was it had varied dials for every single version. So you had different kind of guillotine applied. You had an, an inventory and a meteorite. Those ones were just more of a traditional smooth, but then you had a, originally a salmon, which was hugely popular. That was a lighter shade, didn't have kind of this gradient fume that we're seeing here. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this shifts across lighting. You can already get a little bit of a sense for that here. But what they did is they had a teal version and we'll check that out uh, for the V1. That one's now back, but a completely different pattern. And then they have some different variants as well. There's, I believe, five different ones, and we'll look at those in the full review as well, and three comparisons with the originals. But with this, as you can see, this guillotine here, on the guillotine variants, one of the big things, and I believe this is a first for the brand, is they actually shifted this over. So for the first time, this is a CNC guillotine. And you can see from what I'm seeing on camera here, and I'll, of course, explore it further, and get dial close-ups and all that stuff. But this is just a much sharper cut for it, so you're really going to get more depth. That is a harder, more uh, labor-intensive process to achieve the CNC, but it does give those sharper lines and more depth. Ordinarily, most of their other guillotine style dials are just going to be a stamped, which is common of many uh, many watches out there, especially at lower price points. As far as the price point, um, as of time of recording, it hasn't been officially announced, but it's expected to start at 800 plus. I expect we're probably looking at around, like I'm guessing, 850 uh, for the standard variants. There is actually going to be an a first ever. So these are going to be 316L stainless steel. There's actually a special edition tantalum version. That's going to be a tantalum case and actually a polished tantalum bezel uh, as well. So that's going to be very cool. I believe that's supposed to start at around eight, $1,800. Uh, so certainly a big upcharge there, but something that is just a significantly uh, bargain for anything else that you could find out there. But let's just check this out for some more angles. Get a little bit of different lighting here, play around with that. Really looking forward to exploring this in greater detail. I don't want to spend too much time on this for the full review. I just, as always, wanted to enjoy in this with each of you. One of the things I'm hoping has been updated, and I believe it has. Yeah, actually, look, you can see this strap, no issues with clearance there. On the original version, there were some problems and some complaints where it was kind of actually cutting into any thicker slab leathers, including the one uh, that it, uh, it came with. Um, but you can see still quick release spring bars there. Case back is going to be very similar, but again, does carry over now without that polish that we see elsewhere. And then of course, just the text updates, the movement, you know, nice Geneva striping and decoration there. But yeah, as, as a whole, you can see it is going to be very, uh, very familiar and very recognizable uh, from the original. And then here it is on my six and a half inch wrist. But at the same time, despite being recognizable, it still has a lot of differences for it. And I'm really, like I said, between the polish as well as just the layout as a whole, I'm such a huge fan of the original Nova. It's going to take me some time with this one to see how I really feel. I would love to know, though, from first impressions, what do you think? If you're familiar with the original one, drop a comment. Let me know what do you think uh, in comparison. Do you prefer the original or do you prefer this update? And specifically, what do you like, what do you dislike about the, uh, the Nova 2 that we're looking at here? And then, of course, in the full review, we'll unpack all of the details so you can get a much better sense as to whether this one's for you or not. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. Um, we've gotten a good uh, good overview, kind of quick, uh, quick look uh, at this one, but do stay tuned for that full review. And like I said, we'll dive in. If you know this, uh, this channel, you know, not going to skimp on any of the details. So we'll unpack all of that here before too long. Thanks. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, if you did like this and find it helpful, do tap that like button. If you haven't already done so, smash the subscribe button. Stay tuned for the full review for this. And of course, always have new content coming. And finally, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by.